Well, hi, if you're just joining us, this is Life Bites Live, and I'm Nina Bosky. And a few months ago, I had a chance to see this intriguing documentary with her at the Egypt Egyptian, Egyptian Theater here in Hollywood about the fans of Marilyn Monroe. Well, filmmaker Laurent Morlay did an excellent job of capturing the allure and attachment to this Hollywood starlet even 50 years later. Also joining him in the studio is Greg Schreiner, the president of Maryland Remembered, also featured in the film. So I am so glad and honored that the two of you could be with us today, today Hello. on Life Bites Live. Thrilled to be here, <laughs> my pleasure. So Laurent, let's start with you. What made you want to document this type of angle to a Marilyn Monroe uh, film? To me, what is important, actually, what was important before my film mm -hmm. is that uh, Marilyn Monroe was uh, um, a real icon and she's been dead for like almost 50 years before I was going to shoot my film. And I felt in Los Angeles uh, as an Angelino, as a recent Angelino, that there was something still alive about Marilyn. And I was very intrigued and curious to see who actually um, wanted to, um, to make her alive and keep her alive. And I met Greg. <laughs> and uh, the members of the fan club and yeah. so so what is something that you didn't know about her before going into the film that you know now um actually what i didn't know about marilyn that uh, people um, people in my film and most of the people in the fan club actually uh, love marilyn not because she she is a famous uh, movie star not because she has an incredible body and an incredible um, sexual appeal but mostly because she was a sensitive woman she was a modern woman at her time and the fan that i've i've followed for like almost three months uh, uh, used that uh, that assets uh, for for them their own life actually so that was very interesting to me. <laughs> and how about you, Greg? In regards to uh, in terms of because you're a part of the film, is there anything that you've learned in the experience? Well, I guess I learned number one that I'm not the only one that that's totally devoted to Marilyn. It, it's been a great experience seeing the sensitivity that people really adore about Marilyn, and uh, I guess. It just made me feel even better that I made the right choice all those years ago as a little boy, that Marilyn was number one in my life and still is. Oh, well, you definitely can see that in the film. And I know, Julia, you're like, you know, the, the chat room is heating up. <laughs> yes, it is. So, Greg, obviously, one of the things you mentioned in that clip that we saw was that um, people are just so excited to touch the things that Marilyn touched. Well, I want to know from a totally materialistic standpoint, what's one of the most expensive um, items that you've collected of hers? Well, I would say probably the most expensive things I've collected would be her gowns. Um, and they didn't start out that expensive because I bought them many years ago. However, due to recent auctions, dresses are going as high as $5 million per dress. So I think I'm sitting on a, a good retirement now. I'd say we're making a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's very, very exciting. And the good news is that the, the club is this summer uh, I've put together my collection uh, along with another fellow collector, Scott Fortner, and we're presenting an entire floor of Maryland items that were owned by her at the Hollywood Museum at the corner of Hollywood and Highland. So anyone in town for Hollywood should drop by and take a look at these great treasures. So many people feel so passionate about Maryland. What do you think, and I'll start with you, Laurent, is the biggest misconception of Maryland? Yeah, uh, how can I say that uh, she used her uh, sexual appealing attraction to um, to get people to get jobs. I do not believe in that. Maybe at the beginning of her career, but I do believe that she had a strong uh, respect for the female body and the female behavior. And she, yeah, she was a smarter person, more smart than people used to think. Mm -hmm. And how about you, Greg? Well, I agree with Laurent. I, th I think that Marilyn is very misunderstood, partly because her films are so much of that dumb blonde image, and she was so not that. And there's a great depth to Marilyn I don't think people realize till they start researching her. 
what I've seen, anyone that starts really digging into Marilyn, suddenly they're falling in love with her because they're finding all this facets of, of her that they didn't realize existed. Well, that's what happened, I know, for myself, is I had one image of her, and I realized that she's so much more, and there's a lot more complexity. What do you think she would say today if she saw all this celebration and adoration of her? What do you think she would say, Greg? I think she would be dumbstruck. She'd go, I cannot believe you were doing this. Uh, she, would, she wouldn't have believed it. Uh, I think people just didn't understand uh, back then how fabulous she was, and I think she didn't quite appreciate it herself. And I th uh, it's amazing to me that, that her spirit is still so alive and still reaching out to people.